Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Higurashi When They Cry Sotsu Episode 5. And in the last episode, we have finally started the Wata Akashi arc, which as you guys know, is the Mion slash Shion arc from Go. Except this time in Sotsu, we're going to be looking at that whole arc through another perspective and hopefully in doing that, we're able to uncover more more of the truth. But before we start the arc, there were some interesting things that happened. So of course the first thing was the fact that we got to see the interesting scene from the trailer where we see Satoko actually go out of her way to visit Tepe. And the reason why she visited him was because she knows that he knows his stuff when it comes to gambling. And she used her looping powers to be able to memorize which horse is going to win this upcoming horse race and so she passes that info to tepe tepe bets on the horse and he wins a fat stack of cash and then he split the money up he actually wanted to give satoko the majority of the money since she helped him win but she only wanted a specific amount and with that money she went to one of uh tepe's contacts i guess and she wanted to buy a gun from him so now she has this gun in her hand but she has no idea how to use it so who does she go to best girl Mion of course and so Mion takes her over to her little makeshift firing range and she uses her airsoft gun to kind of show her how it's done and then from that point Satoko started training every single day until she felt she was ready I believe it this took years like she's been training for years we saw her go from the little prankster Satoko to like Saint Lucia arc Satoko so it's been a while of her training but once she finally mastered it that's when she decided okay it's time to start phase two of my plan, and this is when she begins the Wata Akashi loop. So in this loop, everything seems to be working out normally. We have uh, Keiichi and everyone, they were playing board games. Afterwards, the store owner came, he gave his gifts to everyone, and then Keiichi gave his uh, doll to Mion. And then there's a scene where Mion goes to like grab a drink from the vending machine and we see Satoko glowing red eyes and all with the syringe ready to inject her. Now technically we didn't see her inject her, all we saw was her hold the syringe and then next time we see the syringe it's empty on the ground. So she most likely injected it, but who knows, who knows. But without any further ado, let's jump straight into this episode and see what the heck happens in this arc. So if you guys are excited for the episode make sure to leave a like, it'll help me and the video out so much more than you might think, so if you could take the time to do that real quick I would very much appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly Higurashi Sotsu reactions and with that all out of the way let's get right into this episode. Alright, so here we are with episode 5 of Sotsu. Make sure to grab your source videos, pull them up, and then get ready to sync them with me, because we will be starting this fifth episode in... 3, 2, 1, go! Alright. Volume should be good, right there. Whew, let's see. What's the next step in Satoko's plan? Dark Lord Satogo. Oh, this is her at her uh, part-time job. She's heading out. Oh, the doll's in there. And look at how happy she is, man. I love this. This is the, I feel like this is kind of the inner Mion, because we know Mion is usually like more of a tomboyish kind of girl, and that's initially the reason why Keiichi didn't give the doll to her, right? Because he didn't think that she would be interested in it. But then, someone kind of gave me an interesting question, because this just recently happened in the visual novel that I'm playing through on stream. If you like to check it out, we'll actually be streaming it tomorrow, so... You can join in, but um, in the visual novel, 
we've just gotten past the part where Keiichi gives the doll to Rena. And the reason why he didn't give it to Mion was because he didn't think that Mion would like it. But someone asked me a very interesting question, which was, do you think that Mion was sad because she didn't get the doll? Or do you think she was sad because Keiichi didn't give it to her? Because, who knows, it's kind of difficult to read Mion's mind, but maybe she likes Keiichi? Uh, somewhat, somewhat. And, uh, maybe she was jealous of Rena because she got a gift from Keiichi, not necessarily because she got the doll. And maybe that's why the doll is so important and so special to her right now. It could be because she loves the doll, or because Keiichi gave it to her. And we have Chie Sensei. Is it curry time? This is so cool, man. I wish we had a, like, home ec class in our school. Yeah, it's not gonna end well. Oh, no, you might want to keep it down, KG, keep it down. Oh, my God. Yep, she definitely heard. Yep, time to get back to work. Just just continue like nothing happened, KG. Curry showdown. Oh, no. I think Rena and Rika, those two are, like, the best cooks, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see how Keiichi fares against them. And look, she's expertly peeling that potato. Dang, oh my, no way, no way, that's unreal, that is unreal. What the heck, the potato is still completely intact. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh, no, you should probably listen to her. I think she knows what she's doing. Ooh. See, I don't know anything about cooking, so I don't know if she was actually tricking him or not. Oh, okay. What now, Keiichi? What are you gonna do? There's not much time. He's already behind. Oh, she's just sabotaging everyone! I thought she was just picking on Keiichi as usual, but... She got everybody. This is cool, man. We get a new club game. <laughs> Did she pick on Rika, though? Man. Alright, see you later, Mion. Is this her room? Have we ever seen her room before? This kind of looks like the room that Rika woke up in. When, uh... When she, uh, woke up and the first person she saw was Satoko. And here we have sh wait, no! Oh! Oh snap, so this is what happened! Hmm... 
So it was Mion dressed up as Shion. And Satoko's watching. She's waiting for the Hinamizawa syndrome to spiral out of control. But there's no effect so far. Wait, is this after... Wait, I'm so confused, because we haven't seen Shion at all. Huh, that's so weird. They just completely skipped the part where Shion... Wait, oh man, I'm my brain is just mush right now. What the heck happened? Hmm. So she disguised herself as Shion and gave it to her. Oh, snap! Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll explain my thoughts more in depth at the end. <laughs> Dang, so Mion has two jobs? She works there and at the um the restaurant? Man, I'm so lost. They look so similar, man. Who knows, that could have been Shion pretending to be me on this whole time. Oh, and this is the scene from the trailer. We see her covering her neck, so maybe, maybe she's getting a little bit of an itch there. Who knows? And now we're at the... <sighs> we're at the, uh, what is it, the Watanagashi Festival? God, man. Every time we get here. Oh, wait, so that means. Is this like her bodyguard? Shotgun Dragon. Hmm. She sounds a bit older than me, um. Like, I don't remember. They have the same voice actress, right? Maybe she's just making two different voices for them? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's been so long. But soon, Keiichi is gonna bump into Shion, right? And this is where she takes him to the storage? And look, Satoko, she's trying to egg her on. See? She's trying to draw it out of her. And look! Her neck. So let's see, what the heck is this all about? And my question is, why didn't this happen in uh, Oni Akashi? Like, why didn't Shion appear in that arc? But she's here in this one.
And then here we go. Man. Cool. This is so interesting. So I'm guessing, like, I don't know, maybe stress or emotional distress uh, help to accelerate the Hinamizawa syndrome? Hmm. So this is them running. Wait, what happened? Man, we are really getting some, like, insider info here. Detective Delicious working on another investigation. Oh. Okay. So we knew this. He stole Iria's truck. Why did he leave his keys in the car? Oh, wait, what? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. He said um, that was Dr. Iria's um, assistant. He was talking about Takano. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like those two could be siblings, honestly. Oh, man. Is he talking about who I think he's talking about? So she walked back. I know he met her there. Taser. You gotta stay strapped, like your sister. That's pretty thoughtful of him. And the second they see something fishy on those cameras, there will probably be like five cars just like that one lined up behind Shion. Hmm. Ah. Uh, I could have swore. I mean, I could be wrong, but I thought Detective Delicious had a different car. Like, I thought it was a different color. Oh, man.
And here's the scene. Okay, we're seeing so many scenes from the trailer. Hmm. Who could that be? Maybe her parent. <gasps> it's me, Owen! I didn't expect her to be wearing that, though. Maybe she only wears it when she's at home? She looks like she's out for blood, though. God, I'm just, I'm so tense right now. Is Mion gonna walk up to her? Oh? I thought she was just gonna, like, strangle her while she's on the phone. Look at that, she's terrifying. Her twin sister. Ooh, she's really not happy. Oh man, she said, nah, uh, uh, you're not going anywhere. Jeez, I'm, I'm just terrified for her oh wow why did she do it though and look she's just fearless she does not give a crap. Oh my god. Oh, snap! Wow. Oh, jeez. Jeez. This kind of hurts, I'm not gonna lie. As much as I love me, Owen. This is dark Mion right here. This is corrupted Mion. Oh no! Oh no! Satoko, what have you done? You made two sisters turn on each other. Jeez. Oh my god, the sound! Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. And she's still squeezing, Jesus! Oh no. She doesn't even realize what she's done. She killed her own sister with her bare hands. Oh my god, man. Oh, dude, imagine...
God. Oh, this hurts. I can't imagine this pain. I just, I can't, I can't. What? Oh, wow. Oh my god, now she's going after the grandmother! Oh my god, this might kill her. Oh, she's not really in a position to do that now. Jesus Christ, what an episode! Dude, but I was gonna say, um, with the grandmother, like, with tasers, um, you have to be especially careful when using it against, um, older people, or people with heart conditions, right? Because it could be, uh, fatal for them? I wonder if that's what happened here. If just that little zap was enough for her to take out her grandmother. But, God! God! I just... Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I feel... A part of me feels bad because I feel like I just... I can't express my pain. I'm sure many other people, when seeing that or when seeing other, like, heart-wrenching moments in Higurashi, they, like, uh, tear up or maybe even cry... But I, I don't know, man. I feel like a monster. That hurts so much, but I, I didn't shed a single tear, man. What's wrong with me? That was best girl me on. Like, I, I can't imagine how it would feel for me to, like, go to sleep and I wake up and find myself, like, you know, doing what she did or having done what she did. I would lose it, man. Holy crap. How... Like, like, what do you do after that? What do you do after that? And the scariest part would be you being completely unaware that that happened. Because now you might start thinking, like, will I do it again? Like, what's causing this? Does it happen when I sleep? Can I just never sleep again? Oh my god, man. Shion didn't deserve that. Shion did not deserve that. And the saddest part was the fact that even though she knew Mion was about to do something dangerous, she held her taser out towards her, but she couldn't bring herself to actually tase her own sister. So she like brought it out, she like turned it on to kind of, I guess, uh, try to scare Mion off, but Mion just stared at her fearlessly she grabbed the taser and moved it and man even though shion couldn't bring herself to tase her own sister mion just did it effortlessly and not once but twice while she was crawling away after just having been tased she tased her again and then while she was on the ground immobilized she just took her hands and did the thing and seeing like Shion's body like writhe in pain like that ha oh, man this series is brutal but interestingly enough I think that was probably the most brutal moment in Higurashi that didn't actually show any like gore or blood or anything because ah oh, man it, it like hits you it kind of hurts watching that happen to someone but at the same time it also hurts realizing that Mion did that to her own sister without even knowing it like it just it hurts you on so many different psychological levels it just breaks you down man this series breaks you down i feel like after finishing sotsu i'm not gonna be the same man i was going into it dude 
This stuff is brutal. And of course, Dark Lord Satoko was the one behind this one as well. Honestly though, hmm, I guess that'll be the question of the day. So out of Rina's death and Shion's death, which one would you say was the most hard to watch or the most brutal to watch? I think many of us might agree that Mion's was, but I think Rina's was really brutal too. We see her like, she just escaped, she didn't even have shoes on, she was running barefoot through the junkyard, she slipped and fell down a pile of junk, like, and then we just see her, like, cleaved and, ah oh, man, that was brutal too. But I think the reason why this one hit me so hard is one, because it involved my favorite character, Mion, and two, because I know so little about Shion, yet, after watching how she reacted to Mion like approaching her like this I felt so sorry for her I felt like I don't know I was so immersed when watching that scene and I could feel for Shion so much right there because she man that's like imagine you're a parent and then like your child comes up to you and like threatens to kill you like what do you even do you don't want to hurt your own child she didn't want to hurt her own sister here so she just kind of had to take it. Oh man. Oh my god. This episode. This one. This one cut deep for sure. <sighs> I don't know man. I don't know how I'm going to go about the rest of my day after this. What the heck? <laughs> I think I've said most of my thoughts right? Oh no no no. One more thing before we go. So I believe what happened was... Mion disguised herself as Shion, and then she went over to Keiichi's house, she gave him the lunch, and said that the lunch was from Mion, but she was too shy to give it to him or something, and that's why the next day at school, she, or he, gives the lunch straight to Mion? Is that what happened? God, ah oh man, the fact that they're twins makes this so confusing. Because they could easily disguise themselves as each other. Who knows? We could have been living a lie this entire time. What if they switched at birth? And Shion was Mion the whole time. And Mion was Shion the whole time. I'm, I'm confusing myself. Anyways, I'm going to cut the episode here. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment your thoughts on the episode down below. And subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. And with that, I'm going to head out. So I will catch you all in the next one have a good one